Good morning. morning. Welcome to the, uh, our father's house located at the Deer Creek Community Center on Main Street. And you know, we're here in person on Sundays, except for next Sunday. I do need to let you know, we will still have a service, but it will be an online service only next Sunday. Due to the 4th of July, we know many people like to go out of town and take a vacation or whatnot. And believe it or not, my sister and I are going to actually take a little little break from home and, you know, go visit some family. So, But we will bring in you the Lord's but word. But we'll from still there. be bringing you the, yeah, it's just we're going to bring you the word from someplace different. We're going to bring the fireworks of God. Woo! Yeah. So we um, welcome you here, whether you're here physically or whether you're online from afar. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We're at our Father's house. Everyone is welcome to the table. And we want you to know that sincerely. So, um, wow. Announcements? Yeah, we do have announcements, don't we? Uh, we have food shelf coming up. When is that? I am thinking July 16th. Yes, July okay. 16th. Um, Right here at the community center. Right here center. at the community center at 11:30 a.m. You are free to come and pick up your um, groceries. That you, you know, and if you know somebody in, in Deer need. Creek in need or anywhere in need, let them know. They can come and visit us at 11:30 on July 16th, where we will have um, groceries. And then we have something exciting. It's not coming until September. However. It is going to be a healing fair. And I really, you know, there's going to be all different types of things going on. Different types be, of healings. Um, Zozo will be happening, which is a art healing, where you learn how to heal through art. And there will be someone speaking on um, crystals. There will be Barbara. She actually owns the shop that we're going to be doing the Zozo at. Um, there will be someone speaking on plants and what different plants can do for holistic healing. So if you're interested in having a heal coming to the healing conference, and also me and my sister will be available to pray with anybody who needs prayer. So we encourage you to come out. The Art Zozo is donation only, so don't don't worry about it's not gonna cost it's you. It's not anything. gonna cost you. Um but it's located at Heaven and Earth Essentials at 605 South Main Street in Salk Center, Minnesota. So mark your calendar for September the 18th, which is a Saturday. Okay? I look forward to seeing you there. And now let us begin our day with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. We ask for your spirit to be present here today. I ask for the Holy Spirit to just drench us but let us feel your presence no matter whether here or far. Father God, I ask for all of you, none of me and my sister, all of you, none of me and my sister, none, none of us, all of you, use us as your vessels, Lord. Let us deliver the word that you would have us deliver this day. Thank you, Father. And let us all come together and recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You do know that... Um, the re one of the reasons we always say the Lord's Prayer is that is how Jesus instructed the disciples to pray. We always say the Lord's Prayer. And, you know, those of us who pray together stay together. So it's, it's important that we pray together. Well, today, um, the message that I have for you, and my sister also has a message for you, is on the scripture, which I did put up on uh, our page this morning is 1 John 5, 14 through 15. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And 
If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Okay, we're going to talk about this. I was going to title this God's Not a Vending Machine because a lot of times, you know, if you look at the one where it says that if we ask anything according to his will, that is the key of that scripture. Asking God to hit the lottery is not, uh, first of all, God doesn't gamble, so it would not be in his will for us to just hit the lottery because we asked to hit the lottery. And no, you cannot bargain with God and say, but God, if you let me hit the lottery, I'm going to do this, this, and this and that for other people. It doesn't work like that. You, <laughs> you can't bargain with God. No. Okay. Asking for a brand new BMW tomorrow morning to be at in front of your house. Well, that's unrealistic. Okay. Let's really seriously. When God says anything according to his will, he means if we ask something with number one, the proper motivation behind the asking, what is your intent? When you're asking God for things, are you asking God for things because you have a desire and want to be made more comfortable? Or are you asking for God, God for things that are going to stretch you, help you grow and help others all at the same time? That's why it's very important periodically that we always go to the Father and we say, Father, examine my heart. And, you know, make known to me anything that is not in alignment with your heart. Because when our hearts are aligned with God's, we're going to ask for things that we should be asking for. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with going to God. You're having it rough. Your car broke down and it died and you, you need transportation to and from work. And if you pray to God, that petition, Father, help me, provide for me provision so that I can get to and from work. You may not wake up to a BMW, but you, also, but you may wake up to a vehicle that perhaps a neighbor or somebody donated to you to help you out so you can get to and from work. Or even a co-worker may or just call you out of the blue and say, hey, tell you what, I'll help you. I'll give you a ride to and from work to every day. Perfect. So what your idea of provision and God's idea of provision can be two different yes. things. Okay. God's always going to provide what he knows you need. Okay. And he's, he's not going to um, leave you with nothing. He's just going to provide for you in his way and in his timing, according to what you ask, if it's in his will. If you ask him, Father God, I would really like to help my neighbors out down the street. Show me what I can do to help them. Well, that's an unselfish prayer. There's unselfish motivation and he's going to show you and he's going to give you the opportunity to help your neighbor. So it's not, you know, asking God for a, a diamond ring, new wardrobes, having a million dollars. That's not going to like, no. Okay. And I was, can I throw something in there? Sis? Mm -hmm. If you do do that and just say out of care, you know, I, I've seen it happen where someone's prayed to win. I don't know, we'll say win the lottery or like she said, for a diamond ring and they get that object, I can assure you that didn't come from God. You know what I'm saying? If it, God likes to provide provision, not um, true provision, true provision, not like, like she's saying, you know, and, and it's not, but he, he wants to not just provide for your physical needs here on earth, but he wants to mainly provide for your spiritual, your soul, because, you know, after all the things that we store up, in our lives it should be for the kingdom, for the glory of the kingdom. Materialistic things can't go with us. They stay here. Okay. All the money you have when you die, guess what? They don't use money in heaven. So you can't take it with you. So if your focus is on selfish desires, James 4, 3 tells us when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Always check your own personal motive when you're asking God for something. Okay. And sometimes you don't even have to ask because God knows your heart's desire. This is how me and my sister are here today. God knows our heart's desire. 
the thriving of our food pantry isn't as a result of us. It's as a result of God answering a desire within our heart to serve community. Yes. So it, 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 it's the motive was pure. Our motive is to bring community together, a community that can love God with all their hearts together and reach out to the bleeding hearts and the wounded people who don't know God. That was our heart's motive. And so God knows that. So God provides for the food pantry each and every month. Now, here's the key kicker. I'm going to tell you a story that you probably heard many a times. You probably heard it from your parents even. There was a man and he was out in the middle of the ocean and he was drowning. So he called up to God and he said, God, save me, save me. So a boat came by. The man didn't get on the boat. The man cried out again, God, God, save me. Another boat came by. The man still didn't get on the boat. Well, needless to say, the man died and when he got to heaven and he said to God, God, I asked you to save me. Why didn't you save me? He said, I sent you two boats. Why didn't you get on? <laughs> we have to pay attention to the things that God puts in our lives, the opportunities. He wants us, he wants to partner with our heart's desire when the motive is correct. For example, the motive of our father's house, it was a correct motive. But in order for God to partner with me and my sister, we had to take action. We could sit there and talk about it all day long and be happy. But until we started taking action to give God something to partner with, what started out as a thought that led to action that led to where we are, God started partnering with our dream. Okay, do you see how that works? You know, it's not like you ask God and you sit back in a chair and wait for it to happen. You have to <laughs> give him something to partner with. It's sort of like you want a new job, but you don't get online to apply for a job or you don't go out anywhere and apply for a job and you wonder why you don't have a job. It takes action on our part. We have a part to do in this. God wants to see us partner with him. There's no dream too big for God to partner with. If that dream is according to his will, if that dream is going to bring kingdom presence, if that dream is going to build up and edify, there's no dream too big for him to partner with. Okay? He can make anything happen if we partner with him. We have to give him something to work with. So keep that in mind. If you're praying because your car broke down and you don't have a way to and from work, how many people have you called to see if you could get a ride with them? None? Well, how do they know that your car broke down and you can't make it to work? See where I'm going? When you make that phone call, now they know you're broke down and now God touches their heart. They call you back a few hours later and say, hey, you can ride with me. And then, then maybe, the, you know, somebody you talk to has a friend of a friend who has a vehicle that's just sitting there not being used and they're able to like borrow it, too. let you borrow it or even, you know, sell it to you for a little bit of money each week. But you have to do something. You have to take some type of action to partner with God. The first action we should always take is going to the word to check our own motive. In our mind, our motive may be great. Hitting a million dollars, I could, I could help so many people. It sounds great. But money is the root of all evil. Remember that. Be careful. Beware of that. God knows our heart, and God will give us opportunities to help other people. But he gives it to us in small increments. He says, what will you do with this? Show me what you'll do with this, and then I'm going to give you more. That. Show me what you do with that, and then I'm going to give you that. You know, it comes with a responsibility. What we ask for, what we desire, comes with a sense of responsibility on our part. So I leave you with this today. Think about what you're asking for. Is what you're asking for totally for your desire, or is it for the kingdom? Is it to bring kingdom opportunities is it going to edify and lift up others as well? 
I ask you to periodically tap into your own heart and ask God, what is my true motivation behind this? The enemy is a great deceiver. And one of the first places he likes to attack is the mind and perception. Go to the word, ask God, and remember, all of you are very, very rich. You're rich in the one of the ways that is the richest way to be rich. And that is in your heart. So don't worry about that lottery ticket. <laughs> it is, it's what I'm saying. Because you are rich. You're rich within your heart, beyond measure. So go to the Father. Ask Him to check your motivation. And then when you ask Him for something, think about what it is that you need to do to partner with Him. Take action. And trust. Trust that it will happen. And trust that it may happen in a way that you didn't expect it to happen, where it may look differently than what you thought it would look like. But God is a loving father and like a, a loving parent. He knows what's best for us. He knows what's in our best interests, even if we don't agree with it. Just like growing up, we never agreed with our parents, you know. They told us, don't jump on the bed, you'll break your head. And we jumped anyway, and then we got hurt. Mm. So like a loving father, God knows what we need the most. He knows what's best for us. And he's going to provide those things according to his will, not our own. Thank goodness. And with that, I turn over to my beautiful sister, and she's going to share with you. Oh, good morning. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about when you do say prayers and things like that, it kind of helps if you know what the Lord's purpose is in your life to start with. Because like my sister said, God's not a vending machine. He's not here to be a vending machine in our lives. <laughs> he is here to fulfill our needs spiritually. And when God gives us provision, he provides our needs, not our wants. And there's a lot of difference between needs and wants. And first of all, what are some basic human needs? Obviously, it's water, shelter, and clothing. Those are basic needs. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, if you go to God and ask for those basic needs, he can help fulfill those. But anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, a little while back here, I was facing some challenges and difficulties with finding a job. And that was part of it has to do with the fact that I'm older. You know, people worry about your health when you get this age and if you have restrictions and things like that. But anyway, um, being I had difficulty finding that job, I tend to find myself questioning my own faith and hope in the Lord. And I, like most people, tend to become upset with the Lord when things don't go the way I think they're supposed to. I reached out to a friend of mine, Pastor Ken, and he, just like the rest of my family and friends at that time, gave me all the same advice that I would give to someone else in my situation. And that is this, when God shuts a door, he opens a window. God must have something better for you. And at that moment, the advice still didn't take away the sting and pain of not getting that perfect job that I thought I wanted and desired. So I spent a few days pondering my purpose here. Why am I here? What is it I'm supposed to be doing? And then I began that awful, awful dialogue in my brain of why aren't I good enough for that dream job? Obviously a sinner like me doesn't deserve anything good in my life. And I kept reminding myself, I had to keep reminding myself that I am a child of God and his purpose for my life here is different than my own ideas and thoughts. And so I want to give you some scriptures that resonate with me. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 3, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, well, there you have it. So befitting, as that's exactly how I felt, like I was drowning. Oh, but wait a minute. That's right. My Savior walks on water. 
Surely he would save me even from my own self-loathing. In Philippians chapter 4, 13, chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible tells us I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whenever I find life is too hard to handle, I turn to my Bible. And this is so true. I've done this many years of my life. I will say a prayer and I will talk to the Lord about the issue. And then I will open my Bible and I ask the Lord to lead me what he wants me to hear him to say to me. And I open it and I read the first thing that I see. So anyway, um, so of course I turned to my Bible. I said a prayer, opened up the book and read the first passages. And guess what it was? At this time, it was the book of first book of Chronicles, chapter 16, verses 23 through 36. Can I borrow your Bible? <laughs> I didn't write it in here. I thought I did, but I did not write it in here. I hate Corinthians. Oh, I have mine marked. My sister's book is not marked. Okay. Let's skip over that for now. I lost my spot here. Okay, I need Chronicles. First Chronicles. We're looking. Give me one second here. I apologize. I should have been a little bit more... Um, Prepared, I want to say. I thought I had written it down, but I didn't. Um, unfortunately, I, I, re I have so much stuff that I keep in my Bible. Okay, we're going to skip that for now. If you get a chance, look up First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 23 through 36. Because after I read that, that's when the light came on. I had been relying on my own self to accomplish what I desired, not the desires that God had for me. Don't worry about it. One of my favorite books in the Bible is the book of Psalms. And in Psalm chapter 62, chapter 62 verses 5 through 8, I am reminded my soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He is my rock and my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. I'm reading it right now. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. There it was, right in front of me. Instead of focusing on what I felt I was looking for, I needed to turn my attention to relying on God. <sighs> And then also, you know, a couple of things, a couple of other things that I've heard or read is that, you know, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. So when I re-examined re my, my situation with trying to get that job and whatnot, oh, sorry, I moved the table there. With trying to get that particular job, I found out, you know, I thought it was my dream job. I thought it's what I really, 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 really wanted. I thought it was totally my heart's desire. And guess what? He led me to a totally different place, totally different job. And I'm very thankful that he did that because I loved it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great, wonderful job. So I was excited about that. And in my mind, I was so devastated that I wasn't, at first, I almost missed this opportunity because I was so devastated about not getting what I wanted. And it taught me something. It taught me to stop relying on what I want and rely on what God wants. You know, I have never read anywhere in the Bible where God doesn't want anything but good for us. That's all he wants is good, good, good. I've never once heard him say he wants anything bad to happen to us. Does he tell us that we will suffer in life? Yes, he does. Did Jesus suffer? Yes, he did. He suffered the most out of anyone I know. You know, God doesn't really want to number your failures or count your accomplishments as much as he wants you just to have an encounter with him. And that's my thing is praying. And when you pray, like my sister said, it's all about your intention. Even the way you treat other people, when you decide you want to, you're angry and you're mad and you react that way, it's not going to turn out very good. But if you just take a deep breath, calm down and think about what would Jesus do in this situation? Remember the old bracelets we used to wear, WWJD? Mm -hmm. We need to bring that back. I think, yeah. what would Jesus do? And especially in today's society, what would Jesus do? Would he help the person or would he be cool to the person? 
Uh, would he love the person unconditionally or would he put conditions on that love? I don't think so. So I yeah, I think he's already like, kind of proved to us that he loves us unconditional going to the cross like that. Yes, exactly. And that's, that's what I want to say is, you know, Jesus has proven it to us. I mean, he, he gave the ultimate sacrifice. You know, he was ridiculed and, and betrayed by his own people and beat and carried that, had to bear his own cross, which we bear crosses too here. And we just don't physically bear them like he did. But we have spiritual crosses that we all bear. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes you don't see the plan because you're not looking in the right places. If you look at the story of Joseph, his father gave him the coat of many colors. You remember the brothers threw him in a hole and then sold him into slavery? Yes. Okay. If you watch and see what God did with that situation, yeah, he was sold into slavery. He went to Egypt and he winded up becoming Pharaoh's like right hand man. And he was over all the food during the famine. So who did he wind up feeding? His own family. His own brothers came to get grain. Had Joseph had not endured that sacrifice, he would not have been in a position where God wanted him positioned. God knew way down the line there was going to be a famine. And God also knew that he would position Joseph to be where he was at, at the right moment, at the right time. So sometimes when God answers us, we don't see the answer right away because we're yeah. not looking in the right places. We're looking at the, woe is me, I'm going through this, woe is me. Really, when you're in that situation, the woe is me situation, ask yourself, why is woe is me? What is God doing? What is he up to? Talk to him. Talk to him. Or, you know, when you're feeling negative like that, turn to somebody and be like, sis, I need you to pray for me today because I'm having a really negative thought day. Can you help me with that? This is why we need fellowship and prayer and prayer. So, you know, just think about that. How God has, if you read the Bible, you have the greatest drama you'll ever find. <laughs> you, you have murder and mystery. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, it's one of the greatest books you could ever read. It's far from boring, far from dull. It's alive. It, it is, is God's read. It is it's God's read. So the next time you're looking for a good book to read, just pick up the Bible. It's got a lot of stories in there that will like, yeah, that'll encourage you. And if you notice all of the, a lot of the famous men of the Bible, like Saul who became Paul, they, they didn't start out like in a perfect relationship with God. By no means. I mean, when you look at Paul, he was Saul killing all the Christians. And then he turned out to be one of the greatest epistles there ever was. So, you know, and God uses those we least expect him to use. And so let him, let him use you. Partner with him. You know, I was thinking about the story, too, where God saved the woman who was a sinner. She was an adulteress. And they, she was standing there and circled by people who were going to stone her to death because that's exactly what they did back in that day. That was, you know, for, for the sexuality issues that she had, that was what they did back then. And Jesus said to her, you know, she didn't even know it. Her eyes were closed when Jesus, you know, said to her, said to the people, thee who has never sinned cast the first stone. Well, she didn't hear any stones and she didn't feel any pain. And all of a sudden she opened her eyes and there's Jesus. But what did Jesus say to her? Do you remember what Jesus said to her? He said, go and sin no more. He didn't say, get up and get out of here. You terrible sinner. You, he didn't say, listen here. I don't want nothing to do with you. You're a terrible person. And he didn't cast a stone and he, was and he did not have one who had the right to. Yes. And he yep. did not throw a stone at her. Instead, he forgave her and he told her, woman, get up and go and sin no more. So not only did he save her from being stoned to death, but he told her to go and live her life and enjoy it. But the key word was go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think one of these days my sister and I are going to do a sermon on sin because I think people tend to misread sin in a, in, in a think, lot of ways Yeah, that sometimes, you know, when we, we get saved, we're told that, you know, we're going to go to heaven and all that good stuff like that. And, you know, 
that all of our sins are forgiven. And I think some of some of us might may think, I mean, that it's a free pass to do whatever we want to do. And right. it's not because Jesus was crucified once. And he was crucified once for all. Yes. So part of living the Christian walk is I'm not going to tell you here that you're going to be perfect because neither am I. None of us can ever. Be I can't tell you that. All perfect. I can tell you is that you're going to bear crosses and we'll be perfected in heaven. Yes. But you're going to start the journey of perfecting here. You're going to start it because when you take Jesus into your heart, you find yourself changing your mindset, automatically not wanting to do some things you used to do. And you find yourself gaining strength in Jesus. And as you go on, when you reach heaven, you'll be perfected. That's when he'll totally perfect you. But it's Jesus in you that's doing the changes. Yes, it's it's allowing Jesus into your heart and saying, I really do want to change. And And help me, Jesus, help me change. Yep. So, and you can, and I assure you one other thing that I hear a lot is, well, Christians can't have fun. Oh, that's a big Oh, we have a blast, okay? But we have a blast. No, we don't have to drink a lot and party to have fun. Me and my sister get together. It's hysterical. (laughs) Along with my best friends. You know, and you get us all together. We're just as goofy as everybody else is. (laughs) If you you were to ask my brother-in-law, he just looks at us and shakes his head and laughs. Because he knows. He's like, but we have good, clean fun together. And, and, you know, if you're not sure how to do that, reach out to us. We'll give yeah, you well, ideas. We'll, we'll give you ideas. We'll you we can have a good time. I mean, we, we actually play board games. Yeah. Have you ever done that? We do. Oh, that's kind of a little thing of the well, past. card days, games. But yeah, because we haven't had time. But we do play card games. You yeah, know, we, we have do. fun and we laugh. No, we don't gamble on our card games. No, okay. sorry, we don't play poker. We make up things to do for fun games like um, pooping potatoes. <laughs> It's a fun potato game. drop, <laughs> potato drop. But I mean, we find things to do and we laugh and we have a good time because, you know, Jesus wants us to go back to that childlike behavior. So that childlike love and, yeah. and, and innocence. And that you so have. if you go back to there and you start praying and asking for things, if you're asking for things as a child would ask, your motivation is going to be in a really good place. That's the number one thing I would like to get a across today is always consider your intentions before you do something. If your intention is to physically hurt or mentally hurt or spiritually hurt that person, Mm -hmm. then I would advise you, please don't do that. Step away. We have enough of that in the world today. We really do. And what we really, really need is people to love on each other instead of be angry. You know, and if we would look at people, not the physical part of people, but look at the spiritual part, the emotional parts to people, because You know, I spent my life working as a nurse, and one of the things you're taught as a nurse is that you have to care for the person, the whole person, not just the physical part, but the emotional part, the spiritual part, the financial part, you know? We all need help at some point, at some time in our life, and the first place I like to get help is from Jesus, and then I turn to, you know, family and friends that are like-minded, and that will pray with me, and so... You know, prayer is a, is a big thing, but just remember, consider your intentions when you're praying. Uh, think about what it is and think about, are you asking for God's will or your own will? Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. where I want to leave you with today is, is just consider your intentions. So let us uh, pray for you out there. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone afar, everybody near. Father God, you know what they need before they ask. God, I pray that you would provide with the provision that you would have in their life, that your will would be done, Father, not just in their life, but in our life as well. Father, we pray for your will today, Father. We pray for kingdom opportunities, Father, and teach us how to serve you even in a better way, Father. Show us. Father God, we just pray that we would become thirsty and hungry for your word, that we would not be able to do a day without communicating with you and getting into your word, even if we only read one scripture a day, Father. So I pray for all of us to just let your Holy Spirit rain down on us, Father, and just burn a fire deep in our hearts that has a desire to know you even more. And let us be conscious of what we're asking for, Father. Let us not ask for things that are not in your will. And Father, partner with us on the things that are within your will and show us how to partner with you in those areas. 
We thank you for our Father's house and for all the people out there, Father. And we send love and light to each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Peace and light. Until next week when we meet again.